You're exhausting. No wonder dad left. Ooh. Don't bring your dad into this. In this one, we'll be going on a mother-daughter road trip and discovering some shocking secrets about our family. This is a full cozy playthrough of Open Roads, so it's just going to be nice and relaxed. We're going to be having some rambles along the way and enjoying the full game from start to finish. If you're new here, hit like and subscribe for more indie games, cozy games, and games you've never heard of. Find all of my links in the description, and let's begin. Me, Mum, Grandma, Helen, Grandma's 80th. Congrats, Grandma. Look closer. Oh gosh, I love the art style already, don't you? Pack up. We're packing. Mum wants me to pack up my room to get ready for the move next week. It's taken a while, but I'm pretty close. Just a few things left before I can cross it off my to-do list. Hey, who's doing dot 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 in their own diary? Some people are, I'm sure of it, but also unnecessary. Role playing with yourself. All night movie marathon. O2. So we could be back in time, or it could be a nostalgic poster. The calendar says October. Do we have a year? Moving down the 25th. Calendar of uh, horses. We're a horse girl. The Greenville High Gazette is 2003. Never forget, making the anniversary of 9 11. Our lives all changed on that fateful day two years ago. Greenville students share their remembrances. Like all kids in America and across the world, the students of Greenville High's lives were changed forever on September 11th, 2001. It is absolutely. Some of the younger people won't know how everyone remembers where they were and when they heard about it you know and it might be one of those things that for some perhaps when they you know find out after the fact that may have dampened with time for those of us who were of an age through it i'm in the uk obviously but even there it was like what is happening and just staying up all night and watching the news and being like i don't know you just you knew the world was never going to be the same and it never was um the new gym, worth the wait. Lily Rodriguez Sr. I love the new logo painted basketball. Go Gremlins. The Gremlins. I want to play for the Gremlins. Oh, they're reading the thing. Okay. Let's pack up an old newspaper, I guess. Take it with you. A plane ticket. Mm. Better leave these where mom won't see them. Uh, where are we go? Where mom won't see them. What don't we want mom to see? We're going from Detroit to Reno. Reno in... Uh, is Reno in Las Vegas? Where are we? We're going from Detroit? I don't know. Tickets, please. Um, put back. Can I hide it? No. Nail polish. Seance. For my witches. Divine Design, Hancock's Hardware, Webpage Design Services. Oh, in loving memory, Grandma 2003. Nail polish. Nail lacquer. I don't, is, is, is that different to polish? <laughs> Oh, yeah, snail lacquer. Uh, smooches. Some lip balm. A little watermelon. We got... Oh, my grades. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Not doing great in geometry, but otherwise doing amazing. Wonderful. How were your grades at school? Mine were okay. I always could have done better. I was always like an A to C student, but I never revised or test like for anything. I just did it. You know, I just coasted. DVDs, video. Oh my god, renting DVDs. Take me back to any time with DVD rentals. Clueless with Alicia Silverstone. Absolutely had the biggest crush. A uh, rich and glamorous high school student tries to transform into a new people. Most popular girl at school, but fate has other plans. Biggest crush on her, especially when she was Batgirl. 
and Clue with Tim Curry. Haven't actually seen that one. Six strangers invited to a mysterious mansion for dinner when their host turns up dead. It's like the it's like Cluedo, the board game. It's the movie of that, isn't it? But I haven't seen that film. Have you guys seen it? I'm going to avoid rambling about um, <laughs> DVD rentals and video rentals because I've done that in so many videos. But it's like one of my favorite things of older time living. I have to be I have to be for real. Uh, we're doing movie night. Yes, we are. What movies are you bringing? Comedy double feature. I'll give you one clue as to which movies they're going to be. What is it? I already gave it to you. Ah, oh, clueless and clue. You're so smart. We have a little orange and a little apple. Or as they say in Germany, apple. Tess and Fran. Oh, right. I was supposed to feed you. Poor little guy. Tamagoshi. Can we... Play it. Virtual pets were huge. I mean, I'm just living for the nostalgia now of this game. To be quite honest. What's this? Uh, happy birthday, Teresa. It's always so much fun to have you visit. I can't wait till next time. I'm so proud of you. Your business and the kind of woman you're becoming. All my love, Aunt Augustine. August. <gasps> I actually got it right. Antiochus. What's in the trash? Uh, dementia tips from a teenage grandson. Did she have dementia? And that's why I've now binned it. I don't need the tips anymore. Judy's potato chips. But where are the kraken? Butterkiss biscuits. <laughs> oh, sorry. My mouse there. I am... Um, my favourite thing about games like this is just snooping in bedrooms. Love it. Finding out all the things about everyone. Right old snoop, you know. Let's pack our lovely stars. A geode. A birthday card. What's in it? May you enjoy all the blessings of the year. Grandma. Pack it up and keep it. Precious. Mr. Bun Bun, you're coming with us. I could have had the radio on this whole time. Well. Tessa's stuff. Ah, Nevada. Home to all manner of folksy cryptids and cool dads. Cool dads and cryptids? That sounds like a podcast if ever I heard one. <laughs> I love cryptid stuff. The amount of times I've wished I'd had, I have time to do like a mystery kind of thing. Um, like growing up, one of my favorite things, cryptids. Yo, this is like annoying. Um, <laughs> cool dads and you're listening to Cool Dads and Cryptids. On today's episode, I married Bigfoot. Aliens are here. They want your favorite recipes. The fun zone. I'm guessing that's us and dad. Search spots. Hunt. What are we searching for? Accessible by boat. Are we a cryptid hunter? Because that would be amazing. Ah, the hunt for buried bootlegger treasure. Prohibition in America was meant to stop people across the country from drinking alcohol in bars in their homes. But what it achieved was creating a booming industry of illegal alcohol imports. So there's a treasure somewhere. Cup. Why does soda taste a million times better from a fast food place than it does out of a can? Legitimately, like, one of the best things of getting fast food is drinking out of one of those cups. Wow. She's got a book on it and everything. I guess she's searching for treasure. Collecting matches. Pins. Ah, I forgot it. Happy belated birthday. Sorry for the lateness, Tessa Bear. Things get away from me here, but you're always on my mind. I'll call soon. Can't wait. Dad. Is Dad a cryptid hunter? We should pack this up. Don't leave it. That would be rude. Well, Tessa Bear. Looks like you're packing up to move. I wonder if you're going to live with your dad or something. Oh, is this like an old iMac, isn't it? Got into closet. 
Uh, Grimmy says, staying at school, kids, don't turn out like me. Francine was here. Hey, bestie, wanted to make sure you wouldn't miss this message. Now, anybody else who signs this will know I'm your bestie, not them. Let's have a great summer this summer. Movie night every night, Francine. Okay. Things to do. Pack up rest of room. Head downstairs. There we go. I'll need it. Packed up all my stuff. Leaving on a jet plane. Tez? Yeah? Come down to the basement. There's something I want to show you. The basement? Nothing good happens in a What is it? Basement. Oh, it's nothing really. Remember, uh, this? Gah! What is it? What is it? <laughs> it's of the dog we had growing up, Lady. Your Aunt August made it when she was a kid. My god. And Aunt August isn't a rich and famous artist now? <laughs> well, she is one of those things. Not a famous artist, though. <laughs> We've still got a little while before we actually move out, right? Like, a week? Yeah, about. The estate sale was... weird. Having all those people in the house, picking through Grandma's stuff. I'm glad it's over. <sighs> yeah, me too. Are you okay? Mom, I just... We took care of your grandmother right up to the end, and... And now they're selling the house out from under us. I know. Who is? Wanna just... Take a minute and look around and see what's left? I haven't really gone through everything since the sale ended. Yeah, me neither. That sounds really nice. Just looking through what's still here. Aside from this hell picture. <laughs> Amazing that no one bought it, right? Just shocking. <laughs> uh, so you're all packed up, right? Good to go? Uh, oh my god. Uh, Just remember that it needs to be done by Wednesday so we can get everything out of here on time. I know. Is our mum rogue from like the old X-Men cartoon? She got the strip. Um, most of Grandma Helen's stuff was sold off in the estate sale. I haven't really had a chance to look around and see what's left till now. More snooping. It's interesting the art style, like how much you kind of miss if you don't do lip sync. It's weird that they did like some, but then not, because then it really makes out when it's not stand out. Ooh, so dapper. Was this Grandpa's? Also, the voice for this um, is Caitlin Diva? Diva? D D D Diva? How do we say the name? Um, who's great, honestly. She was great in that recent Alien one. Like, no, it's called, like, Nobody's Coming to Save You or something. And she was really good in Justified, like, years ago. I remember seeing her in Justified and being like, oh, wow, this girl needs to be Ellie. I was like, I don't know, like eight years ago or something, maybe more. I mean, she's a bit older now. But now she's going to be Abby in The Last of Us, like the next season that's coming. So, that's cool. Brush, pan, and brush. So, uh, but I haven't seen her voice act before. But here she is in this. Dear Millie, Millie Calder. Maxims, axioms, and more from the saga of the Midwest. Grandma's advice column was popular, wasn't it? For a little while, yeah. I felt really lucky that I got to ask her for advice face to face. I remember when we went to that one book signing when I was a little kid. You remember that? Yeah. I mean, people in the audience seemed so excited and nervous to get to ask her their questions right there in person. Sometimes when I'd ask Grandma for advice, she'd start off with, don't tell Millie, but... I think she saved her special advice for me. Well, she could have 
given some advice to herself and realized that taking out three mortgages on her house wasn't such a good idea. The bank is selling it out from under us. Damn. Thanks, Grandma. Um, be weird to have someone famous in your family, right? Like, immediate family? Anyone know anyone famous? Anyone got any famous people? Anyone living in a shadow? What do we got here? Leonard Lambros, property inspector. Grandpa Leo was a... An inspector for the county. What's that mean? He inspected things for the county. Oh, <laughs> great, Mom. Thanks. <laughs> Commercial buildings, mostly. When we were driving around town, he'd point out the ones he'd inspected. I remember he was very proud of inspecting the department store. You know, the big one on Old Main Street. Every foot of electrical, fire sprinklers, alarm system, everything. He'd say he was the only thing keeping half the buildings in town from burning down. Electrical fires are no joke. Mum looks like she was definitely in a coven. Might still be, actually. Cow collider. Okay, anything else in here to be worth looking at? Age 43 years, Orange Street, Greenville, Michigan. Ah, oh, it's his obituary for Leo Lambros. A veteran of the Second World War serving as a surveyor with the 173rd Field Artillery Battalion. Scouting out enemy positions from the front lines, he worked for Geen County as a building inspector, surviving are his wife Helen Lambros and his daughters Opal and August. So wait, our mum's called Opal? Definitely a witch. Or a stripper. Funeral arrangements under the direction of the Milton family funeral home. Uh, just a little joke, just a little joke, guys. Come on, that's definitely kind of a stripper name. Um, where are we going? Is that everything? I feel like we've seen everything that's in here. Fuse box. Let's head upstairs. Cute kitchen. Oh, look, here we are growing up. I'm taller than you were. Who's taller now? You are. But but I've still got time. There were collectible fruits, and we got fruit wallpaper and fruit magnets. We did our best, but the results were. Sorry. What does it say? Glad I had you there to supervise my baking skills. Why are we not packing this? Wedding invitation. Who are these people? Mom's friends? The joy of a wedding celebration, the 9th of June, 2002. Oh, I was trying to look at a picture. I've got to take more pics with Francine this year. We're so cute. Maybe I should start carrying a camera around. Hmm. Yeah, be a camera girly. Me with all my visits to the pond. I'm like, I need to get a good camera. Or at least a phone. I'm definitely going to be getting a new phone this week. So I can take some better pictures and videos. Because I've been filming the baby ducks now that it's spring. And putting them on Instagram. And it just looks so bad when I zoom in. God, I love cherry drinks. So much. Why can I pick up it? <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it, but like, do I need do I need to be able to look at the coffee pot? I don't know. Oh, diced tomatoes and basil and garlic. I should call it basil. Basil. So, Dutch looks like we're still packing stuff up. Wow, was this? Was this taken right here? Cool. That's Grandpa? Mm-hmm. Probably only a year before he died. Of a heart attack? Yeah. Very sudden. It's scary. But I guess that's how heart attacks are. Yikes. Mm hmm, what a big house. 
my gosh. Who's smoking? Ugh, Mom, please quit already. Kids hate their parents smoking. Oh, how did this end up down here? Huh. Must have been in a drawer of something that got sold. This is from one of the first digs Dad and I went on. Oh, it was kind of adorable how excited you both got about going on those digs. Mm. I remember being so sure that we would actually find bootlegger gold. Or at least a clue about it. <laughs> Your dad. <sighs> well, at the very least, he certainly had a way of firing up your imagination. I'll give him that. I wonder if we're gonna, if this is gonna tie into what we're doing after this. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen once we leave the house. Because right now it's obviously we're just, this is a way of providing a bit of character backstory and that we're leaving the house and looking at things. Um, and then we'll, I, but I'm curious to see where it goes. I know that it's kind of a road trip, so. What? No one bought this masterpiece? I'm downright offended. I made this when I was, what, four? At Frankenmuth. Yeah, at that pottery demonstration they did. They'd call little kids up from the audience and show them how to do it. I was, I was so excited. I was jumping up and down, waving my hand, because I knew that Grandma likes pots. She kept it up on this display shelf with all her other pieces all those years since you gave it to her. Oh, honey. It's okay. I'm going to hold on to it. Absolutely hold on to it. It might make you sad now, but in five, ten years, it's going to be, you know, a beautiful memory. It's it's hard sometimes when things are sentimental to keep them. Sometimes we want to get rid of stuff. But I always say hold on to it. If you need to, you put it away somewhere where you can't see it until you're ready, much like with emotions in your own brain and your heart. But never get rid, because there will come a time when you are strong enough to hold it and look at it and kind of feel that memory and appreciate it for what it is. I... I think I'm going to hold on to it. Grandma held on to it all this time. She wouldn't have wanted me to throw it away. She had a little pottery area. Is this some of the last pottery your grandmother made? Yep. After her fine motor skills started to go. Mom's got to be sick of us calling her every Tuesday. <laughs> hey, Ma, what's this thing? She's like, oh, should I just follow you around and talk you through stuff rather than you call me every two seconds? It's still kind of beautiful. I miss her a lot. Yeah, me too. Stuff like that's difficult. One of my granddads, he was a beekeeper. Um, as like a hobby and sort of part of as his job from when he was a handyman for this family. Um, and then he continued to keep them later on and made his own honey. And that was like a very like, when he went, it was like a thing of oh, there's like only this many jars of honey left, you know, in the the garage. And so everyone got like some honey to sort of in the family to take. And then it being like that being the last of the honey. It's that kind of thing like in movies when they have a frozen meal or something in the fridge, like the last thing someone who passed made on. But with honey, it lasted so long. And then it was sort of months later even that it was kind of, oh, it's the last jar. And like, that's it. Like that is a thing a finite thing, you know? Oh my god. Uh, hey mom, look at this pottery. <laughs> Just oh good, some seconds. of grandma's pottery didn't get sold. I loved watching her at the potter's wheel when I was little. Had she been doing pottery her whole life? Honestly, I think it's something else she picked up after my dad passed. Like the advice column? No, she was doing that since I was a kid. Did grandma... Was she ever with anyone else after Grandpa died? Whoa, where did this come from? Well, she just seems so vivacious. You'd think some man would be interested. Yeah, no, not that I know of. 
Nosy. Can't go in the garden. Looks like a cute little garden though, doesn't it? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Looks at that. Are we ready to go, Mum? Let's get on the road. Oh, hey. That scared me. That sounds it's like it's in the real world. Ugh, exhausted. The state sale was a lot. But my phone doesn't even make that sound. That's and I easy thought for it was you ringing. to say. Yeah, I remember. And the answer is still no. I. Well. The what? Oh, right. Right. Sorry, it hasn't exactly been at the front of my mind. Yeah, it's around here, somewhere. No, it's fine. Okay. Love you. Bye. Sister? Unbelievable. What did she say? Nothing helpful. Is she still not going to help us with the house? No. She was just calling to ask me to find some book of hers. Any idea where it could be? It must be upstairs somewhere, in your grandma's things. It has a red and black cover, white block lettering. I'll know it when I see it. Okay, let's go. Aunt August called Mum, looking for some books. It's important to have some reason, apparently. It's probably somewhere upstairs. That's my room. Let's look in Grandma's room. Grammy's tub. Oh. Guess we can get rid of these. Grammy was taking... Acetamifrinin. Mouthwash. Hmm. Okay. Appetizers. Some art. Oh. I remember hiding in here with a flashlight to read my books when I was a little kid and we were visiting Grandma. And a box of crayons, apparently. We'd come to visit and I'd hunker down in here for hours. Some kind of game in my head, I guess. I'd be hiding in here and I'd hear Grandma out there in her room, typing away or just reading in bed. I know she knew I was in there, but... She'd always pretend not to know. And I'd pretend she had no idea I was hiding. I don't know why. I just liked the feeling of knowing she was out there. I have only slipped away into the next room. Somewhere very near. Just around the corner. I just read that poem recently. The poem you read at Grandma's funeral. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. What are we, hey mumming? Oh, somebody bought Grandma's old writing desk? And her typewriter. He said he was an advice columnist too, and wanted to use them for his writing. He said your grandmother was a real inspiration. He left a very nice note. And a lot of money? Well, it was just an old desk. But it had sentimental value. For us, maybe. Agony aunts have fans. And for him, obviously. Can I see the note? Sure. Opal. Your mother has always been an inspiration. Not just to me, but to an entire generation of writers and readers. I can't tell you how much peace she's brought me over the years. To be able to write where she did, well, I hope a little of her magic crosses over to me. Yours, Ben Gerber. Well, okay. I guess it's all right that he got it. <laughs> Glad you approve. Mm. Where would this book be? Can't see it. And see no book. In another room, perhaps. What kind of street do we live on? Looks nice. Hey, Ma. 
Actually, maybe I should just put this back. Opal, sorry to hear that Mum's doing worse. I've been thinking about her a lot lately. I know it's a sore spot, so it's the last time I'll bring it up. I wish you'd let me help with Mum's medical bills. I get you'd rather have me there in person to help, but I just can't get away from work long enough to make that happen. Sorry that money's the only thing I can provide right now, but that's the situation we're in. If you're stressed about everything you have to do, you can always send Tess down here for a weekend again. I love having her around. Call me if there's anything new with Mum. Love, August. At least she's helping. I am the very model of a modern major general. La 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 da 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 mineral. Pirates of Penzance. Directed by Opal. Mum's directing the theater. What's this? Oh, it's a hook pole thing to pull down the hatch to the attic. Could August book be up in the attic? With Grandma's things? Could be. Alright. We can go up there, but... You go first. Could be spitters up there. I found a weird hook pole thing. What the heck do you call these things anyway? Well, at any rate, I should be able to use this to pull down the steps to the attic. Gone home vibes. Okay, come on up! <coughs> Damn, it's... Dusty. Now, where's that book? Felicity, swing into spring. Was in, was out. Was not to be caught dead in. Marriage, maybe mother didn't always know best. The new makeup, Ruth Harper takes you step by step. Sun, moon, rising. What's your star sign and how to make it work for you? Biting your tongue versus speaking your mind. 60 cents. Felicity. Mm -mm. It's funny how, like, horoscopes used to be in newspapers and magazines and stuff, and now we just scroll on TikTok, and then it's like, Leo, this is for you. Your march is going to be blah, 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 blah. And you're like, ah, that is what my march is going to be like. Okay, well, this is just creepy stuff. Why are these up here? You'd rather they were downstairs? Good point. Grandma was a witch. What's this? A wedding dress. Whoa. Grandma's wedding dress? Don't leave it open. It's I dusty. wore it on my wedding day, too. What? And you can wear it. What? Uh, I don't want to wear that, thank you. But, I mean, I'll say definitely to keep you happy, but come the time? Definitely. I knew you would. No, thank you. Well, you didn't know. Oh, I knew. I've always thought this was such a beautiful dress, and I'd always wanted to hand it down to you. Like your grandmother handed it down to me. Those sound like you reasons. Well, you just said you'd definitely want to wear it for your wedding, so... I guess there are you reasons. I was kidding. Too. It's April Fools. What? Uh. Oh, <gasps> Mom. Do you ever think sometimes I say things I know you want me to say? That's exactly what I just did. Mom, do you ever think that maybe sometimes I just say things I know you want me to say? So you don't want to wear the dress? I. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm ever gonna get married. Well, I just in the future. Please don't patronize me. Oh. I don't want you to tell me something just because you think it's what I want to hear. You're better than that. Better than that? It's... I just... If I don't say what you want me to say, you don't take no for an answer. So when I asked if you wanted your grandmother's wedding dress, you said yes, but you meant no. I understand. You were just telling me what I wanted to hear. You don't want the dress. I get it. <sighs> I mean, but it's a nice dress. It meant a lot to Grandma. And to you. Isn't that enough? 
it's the thing is like I can and have in the past been a little bit of a people pleaser and do find it hard to not you know like if you think the other thing to say the thing that's you don't want to hurt someone or whatever right like that is something I am aware of within myself and that I deal with and try to combat but if someone consistently makes it hard to create a space for you to share your true feelings on something I don't feel like they should get to tell you off like don't just tell me what I want to hear and it's that thing of like but if I don't do that then you get mad or you get like upset or like what like things become difficult and it's that kind of push and pull you know like because being a people pleaser the worst thing about that is that it does come at the cost of yourself but also it does end up creating like a resentment because you're kind of doing stuff you don't want to do for other people you know so it's kind of um in that case it's like a two-way street though you know if i'm gonna work on my problems you've got to uh create a space for me to say it you know oh grandpa leo was a bowler he and dad have that in common what do you mean dad loves bowling no he doesn't but he's always wearing those bowling shirts didn't he used to be in a league or something <sighs> honey he just thinks those shirts make him look hip. Bowling shirts? He's right, they are hip. Yeah. Hip and cool, like, um, like a guy in a ska band would wear or something. Ska? It's, um... Ska? It's a music that cool kids at school like, she? It's this music that cool kids at school like. It has, like, trumpets and stuff in it. And, and the guys wear madness? fedoras and sunglasses and dress shoes and stuff. And I, I, I think, like, bowling shirts. Like Dad. Ska is cool like Dad. I see. Anything else? Nope. Okay. I like madness. I always forget they exist. Dun, dun. Well, so far, this is um, Morph picks up things, listens to what the game has to say, and then gives his own take on it, simulator. We'll see if things <laughs> develop further from here. I'm assuming they're going to. Stick with me, okay? It's fine. Hit the like button if you haven't already, and stick with. What's under here? I'm sure it's uh, going to pay here, off. Here, let me grab that. I'll put it up here to look through. Hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of old stuff in here, but... Uh, Mom? Hold on, it might still be here somewhere. There's something... A trapdoor. Ah, here it is. Maybe if your dad had read this, he wouldn't have stopped working at the video store. Mom! What's in there? Don't open that trapdoor. Okay, forget about August's book. We found a weird suitcase in a secret compartment in the attic. Did Grandma hell and hide it here? Why? Answers may lie within. Where where is it? Ah. Grandma was a spy. Ah, oh, this is just some junk from the old summer house. Your family had a summer house? Well, it was more of a cottage, I guess. We spent the summers up there for a long time. And you've never taken me to visit? Well, I haven't been there since I was your age. We just stopped going one summer. The summer after my dad died. I think there were just too many memories there. Oh my god. What? Aren't you seeing it? Seeing what? Right here! Behind them? That's a freshly covered hole. Uh-huh. It's obviously the location of the buried bootlegger Gold. In our backyard, you mean? Indubitably. Lady probably buried a bone there. Dogs don't really do that. Only cartoon dogs do that. Only cartoon dogs bury bones, but real-life bootleggers bury gold in people's backyards? In 1968? It was a different time, Mother. Sure. Why would my mind immediately go to that? Bit obsessed, huh? I thought that was a finger. Groovy. Groovy van. <laughs> I did love that van. The engine died for good while we were visiting the summer home, and so I just turned it into my bedroom after that. <laughs> you slept in a broken down van? 
Well, the summer house was small, and I always had to share a bedroom with August. When I realized I could have my own space just by sleeping out in the van, it was a no-brainer. Did you, like, redo it to be like a bedroom inside? Yeah. Your grandfather pulled the seats out for me, and I set up a little bed frame with a mattress and all sorts of posters and pillows and shelves and things like that. <laughs> wow, that's actually cool. Could I do that? With our car? No! You're so cool, Mom. Clipped article. Custody. Another burglary last night in the state police are investigating as a series of crimes carried out by a single organized group. Once again, there were no signs of forced entry. Nearly all valuable jewelry was taken over $100,000 worth of merchandise. Local girl scouts take trip to beach. Dear Millie, recently a close personal friend of mine confided in me that she's having an affair on her husband. I love them both dearly, and I'm not sure if it's better to let the husband know or keep the wife secret from Doubtful in Duluth. Dear Doubtful, situations like these are painful for everyone involved. There's never an easy out. Excuse me. Keep in mind that this is her secret to keep, but not yours. Keep your loyalties where they lie. Oh. Whoa. There was a crime spree? Oh, yeah. He had department stores and fancy clothing shops. Places kept getting robbed. The police couldn't figure out how the crooks were pulling it off. It went on for, well, I mean, it felt like months. So what happened? Did they get caught? Now that I don't remember. Hmm. Recently, one of my daughters gave me a tremendous shock. She's married. Apparently, her college beau and her tied the knot without my knowledge. She claims they wanted to skip the wedding to save up for a house, but I'm hurt by her exclusion. She knows I've dreamed of a big wedding for a long time. How can I convince her that a marriage founded in secrecy will never last? Editor's note. Millie is a character. Pull it together. Dear Miffed. Editor's note. No. But she said Miffed mother-in-law. Half the battle of being a parent is allowing your children to make their own mistakes. Only time will tell if the marriage will stick. The only thing you can do is make the best of it. Consider the weight your daughter's been under, keeping this under wraps. We all have our secrets, myself included, and not to be able to tell even our closest loved ones can feel suffocating. While it can be hard to see, a child makes such a foolish mistake, the best thing a mother can do is bite her tongue. Millie. Editor. Too harsh. Rewrite. Okay. So just some of her old articles. Some rocks. Cute. Weird little rocks. Hmm. Ah, these little stones were from the stream near the summer house. You painted them? Me in August. The rocks from the stream were so smooth, but I forget why we painted them. <laughs> you were really that bored, huh? There weren't many TV channels back then. Tragic. Okay. Postcard. We'll be together soon. I love you. We're going to love our new life together, free and happy. Helen. <laughs> well, whoever this guy was, it sure seems like he and Grandma had something pretty intense going on. Was Grandma Helen... Planning to run off? In a secret relationship? In some kind of secret relationship? No! Not the Helen I knew. <gasps> Intrigue! Grandma, what were you up to? Okay. Grandma's... Diary? Should we? Oh, I don't think we should really... Oh, Grandma wouldn't have cared. I'm dead. What difference does it make to me? I can hear her saying it now. Just a peek. Gotta love reading a diary in a game. The ultimate snoopage. Aren't any help. They think they're being good neighbors, but if anyone should know where the path of good intention leads, it's these church ladies. The children can carry on best they can. Opal's caught up in her own teenage dramas, as usual, almost as if it were any normal summer. 
August does worry me a bit. She's becoming caught more and more in her imagination. I wish I could help her, but there's so much I can't say. It's becoming a challenge keeping my correspondence with concealed. It's only a matter of time until we're together again, in person, but to hold it all inside, not tell a soul. It's almost too much, but he knows and I know. Soon enough the waiting will be over and this will all be in the rear view. Forget about the past. Leo is dead. All that matters now is our future together. <gasps> La gasp. A key. What is this? So, Grandma and this guy were definitely together before Grandpa died? Poor Grandpa. And they were gonna run away together? You never heard about this? No, this is- And what is this key to? Why is it hidden in here? Something at the summer home, I assume. I... Okay, well, now we've got to go check the whole place out. To find out who this mystery man was. Don't you want to know? I don't know, Tess. I, we still have so much to do around here. Come on. It'll be fun. An adventure. I still need to call Tina at the theater and finish cleaning out the fridge. Come on. We never get to do stuff together. You spend all your time at the theater, and I spend all my time in school. When when was the last time we were able to do something? To talk? Well... You do want to know, don't you? I can see it, Mom. I can see it in your face. <sighs> oh, God. You know, a little change of scenery would be nice. Ha, that's the spirit. We could spare a weekend before we have to move for a little road trip, right? To tie up some loose ends. Right. And some of those little towns along the way are great for antiquing. Yeah, sure. All right, it's a deal. Let's hit the road and see what we find. I could really use a break from all this, even if it's just for a weekend. Pack your overnight bag. Yes! And bring your homework. I don't need you falling behind at school. What about August's book? We can FedEx it to her when we get back. Okay. A road trip! This is gonna be great. Okay. We're on the road to the secret summer house to find out what's the deal with Grandma- What's the deal with Grandma Helen's mystery man? Who knows what we might find? It'll be a while before we get there, though. Okay, interesting. V very, very slow opening. To have your first 40 minutes just be picking up things and having your mum comment on them. I mean, I'm glad I'm making a video with it and I can kind of riff on stuff to you. Um, but I can- If I was just playing it myself, I might have been a little bit- lost there, you know. Services, can we pull in and get some coffee, please? A little road snack. This is a very pretty area. Where, where are we? What highway are we on anyway? Oh, this is the old two-lane north route from before there was a freeway. <laughs> it used to be the main route north, but now it's pretty off the beaten path. It's the way we always took to get up to the summer place when I was growing up, though. So I wanted to take it again. It's nice. It's nice out here. Peaceful. Mm-hmm. Used to be a lot more cars on the road, and little shops and towns along the way. But with all the traffic going up the freeway now, everything kind of died off. Hmm. Road trip, a trip, a trip. More fruit. Obsessed with fruit. Is it okay if I turn on the radio? I don't know how much <clears throat> signal we'll get, but yeah, sure. Okay. Is that Morse code? It says, hang on, <clears throat> I actually speak Morse code. What uh, the hell is this? Oh. It makes me uncomfortable. I think it's a numbers station. Is that 
Is that something from, like, the X-Files? Exactly. Uh, maybe? Car radios can pick them up in the middle of nowhere. Some people think it's a secret coded government message. Whoa. Maybe if we decode it, we can find out where they're hiding the aliens. <laughs> you get right on that. The truth is out there. I love the X-Files. I want it to be Mulder so bad. Um, anyone who's seen my Martha's Dead playthrough knows that I'm an expert with Morse code. And this is saying listen to Down to Sleep on Spotify, YouTube, and everywhere you get podcasts. My podcast are bedtime stories and audiobooks. Read softly to help you get the rest that you deserve. <laughs> Interesting. Who would have thunk? What are you doing back there? Are you going to do your homework? No. Reading in the car makes me car sick. Me too, babe. Then what are you messing with back there? I don't know. So stop it. It's not safe. I can't even read a text. If I'm in a car, I cannot read a thing Inst instantly. <laughs> Noicious. Hey, mom. Oh, she sat right next to me. Hey, mom. And thank you for tuning in to Piano Hour on W Buffalo. Good lord. When did you say the last time you were at this summer house was? Oh, when I was, I guess, 15? Your age? I'm 16. I meant about your age. <laughs> so, a super long time ago. So, a super long time ago. Wow. No one's been there since, like, the 19th century. <laughs> Uh -huh. What was the Industrial Revolution like? <laughs> Tess, I wouldn't know. Did you ever meet Galileo? <laughs> Jesus, how old do you think I am? I mean, I'm just estimating. It, it's a rough estimate. It's a rough estimate. <laughs> I'll say. It was the 60s. I think summer of 68. 1968. So, like... 35 years ago? And you say you're bad at math. What was it like? The summer house? And the dark ages, but yeah, the summer house. <laughs> I just always really liked it there. It was an escape. From what? Everything, I guess. School, town, same old. Every day just felt like it was ours when we were there. Honestly, like, everything post-2000 feels like the same era, and it's like, the 90s was, what, 30-plus years ago? And that was what it was to be growing up, what the 60s were, like, stuff like that that makes you realize the passage of time, where you go, oh my god, we're in 2024, you know? Oh, what is time? So why did you stop going? Oh, um, yeah, we stopped going as a family when I was your age, and then I went off to college, and then married your father. Did Dad even know about this place? I can't imagine Dad passing up a free summer home where he could just hang out and do nothing all day. So you're saying your father is lazy? I said what I said. He's a man of leisure. Is that what that phrase means? What else would it mean? He likes relaxing. He sure does. It's probably why I never mentioned it to him. Because I knew he would never have put in the work to actually fix it up so we could use it. It needed a lot of work? Well, not last I saw it, but being unoccupied for decades out there in the middle of nowhere? It's got to be falling apart. It could still be in good shape. Maybe somebody's been, you know, keeping it up. You hope squatters have been living in it? No, like, you know, like, shoe elves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd, it'd be nice if it were magically still in good shape, considering we need a new place to live. To live in? Tess, I, I'm <clears throat> sorry, it's, you couldn't live there. And not, not year-round. Why not? Well, it doesn't have central heat, or even really insulation. It's a summer home, not a winter home. 
better than having no home at all. Where are we going to live, though? I mean, why are we moving out this week and we don't have somewhere to live yet set up? Fine. That's then a real where question. are we going to live? I don't know yet. We're going to be living in this car, aren't we? No. Just like when you lived in that van. We can find an apartment. How are you even going to pay for an apartment? The theater company, uh, you know. I thought you said it was underwater. Well, you know, it's not doing great, but... Mom. What? We need money. Believe me, Tess. I know. <gasps> We're gonna find the gold. If Dad was still here. Excuse me? He, he could help. Pay for things. If your father and I were still together, we wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. Well, have you asked Dad if he could send back some money? To help? Absolutely not. <laughs> he, he doesn't have the money. But Dad moved out west. For work. <laughs> well, don't laugh at me. I'm not. I'm not. It's just... work. Sure. It, it wasn't for work? Then, then what was it then? I think I deserve to know. If he hasn't told you his side of the story, I'm not going to step in and take that responsibility for him, like oh. I always did. Your father left me in a hell of a situation. We made all these decisions together. Do you not understand that? We made decisions that depended on us both, you know, sticking around. I didn't plan for any of this. <sighs> you idealize your father, you know that? And I just don't really want to talk about it right now. Is there a difference between Fine. idealize and idolize? Let's never talk about anything important. I never, um... I don't know if I ever heard... I idealize. I idealize. I'm googling. Uh, regarding or represented as perfect or better than in reality. And what's idolized? Admire, revere, love greatly or excessively. Well, do both of these things to me. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have my phone buzz from the glove compartment. Old school. Hey, Tessa Bear, just thinking of you. Easy to forget about weekends here. Every day is a work day for me. So this is the funny thing with text messaging that people might not know and how text speak came about was actually to save money because you were charged by the text message and you only had so many letters that you could do in a text message, like an old school tweet with 140 characters. So you would use like two instead of two and four instead of four because you were trying to get it all into one message or as few messages as possible because it was costing 30 to 40 pence which is like what 60 70 cents per text message um before there were plans that even existed that were you know infinite texts or you would be on a plan that was so much a month that you get 100 texts a month or something um yeah sending a text used to cost money wasn't really included there was no WhatsApps or anything. Hey, Dad, what's up? Not much at work right now, but good to hear from you. So I can say, how's work going? Oh, sorry, do you need to get back to it? Let's ask him how work's going. Good. Making money. Would you be able to send some back? Yeah, send some. Where the child support at? I don't know if Mum told you, but we're moving out next week. It's going to be hard for Mum to pay for rent at a new place and stuff like that. Do you think you could send some money? I'd love to, kid, but right now my liquid assets are all tied up in reinvesting at work. If I send enough back, that could help be worth a damn. Without sinking my business out here, I, I, I would. Your Mum's always been the smart one. She'll figure it out. Don't worry. You understand, right, Pumpkin? Yeah. Did you tell your mum you bought the tickets? Not yet. Me and mum actually on a road trip right now. We're investing a family mystery and going to her old summer house. Can you believe it? Oh, the tickets are to go visit dad. And that's why we don't want mum to know, because she'll probably be upset. Also, give me money, dad. Well, you need to tell her, kiddo, or else I will. And you know she'd freak. Okay, I will. 
I know you will. I love you. Actually, I actually have to get back to it now. Treat your mum nice, okay? You're listening to Deadbeat Dad ASMR. Text messages from your dad. Hey, pumpkin. You know I would if I could, right? I'm sorry. Hey, kiddo. Sorry I missed your recital. I'll make it to the next one. Hey, champ. I heard you hit the big home run in the game today. Sorry I missed it. Daddy had to work. I'll get the next one. Talk to you later. I withhold my love. Are you sending text messages to someone? Uh... Who are you texting? Uh, <laughs> it's the sound. Yes. Yes, I am. To who? It's to whom, mother? It was dad. Hmm. Just getting his side of the story, huh? Uh... No comment. It's all right. Having a common enemy can help bring people together. You're not my enemy. Or dad's. Sometimes it feels that way. Well, it's... not supposed to. Ouch. I would have maybe started the game there and then flashed back to the house because the house was so much slower and less interesting than the car and the car scene was pretty good. Mom! My God. Are you okay? I just didn't think it would still be here. Um, Mom, it... Well, it is. <laughs> and it looks to be surprisingly well-preserved. It's... Well, it's not just like I remember it. <laughs> A little more... Run down? Run down? Weathered. Than the last time I was here. But I guess I am too. Want to start looking around? Yeah. This isn't exactly what I pictured when Mum said they had a summer home, but it's still pretty cool in a retro way. Probably lots of cool old stuff inside from when Mum was a teen. Hopefully some clues to the identity of Grandma Helen's mystery man. Mystery man, oh mystery man. What was you and my grandma's plan, it's your mystery man? Van. And van. it's locked. Gotta keep all the groovy stuff in there secure. Please tell me the keys are somewhere. I need to see what a lava lamp looks like after it just sits there mutating for 30 years. They might have been... Hmm... I can't remember. Don't do this to me, Mother. I have to see how much tie-dye is in there. Please. Oh, August was always trying to steal my keys so she could get in there and mess with my stuff. They're probably in her room. Oh, the little criminal! All right, I'm on the case. The groovy stuff is so close I can taste it. I don't think you're going to want to taste anything in that van. The van that mom turned into her bedroom when she was a teen, still sitting there and locked. Look at this lovely view. Beautiful fields. Wonderful. Let's go on in. Is this a... Is this a trailer home? It's a mobile home. <clears throat> what did I just say? They're not the same thing. A trailer home hooks up to the back of a truck and can be towed around. You can take it from place to place. A mobile home arrives on a trailer, like towed by a big truck. Go on. A mobile home doesn't have wheels. Well, why didn't you just say that? Well, I, I will admit it took me a moment to untangle the nuances. But if it doesn't have wheels, how is it mobile? Oh. Nineteen sixty-eight TV set buyer's guide. Roller skates. Bring them back. Roller skates are so cute. Damn. Don't hunt. These have seen better days. Yeah, it's a shame they've gotten so moth-eaten. I meant when they were alive. Right. 
I think hunting is really rude. Like, leave the poor animals alone. You know, people have been hunting animals since we lived in caves. <clears throat> right. Before there were supermarkets. Or shotguns. Hunt like a caveman, and maybe I'll give you a pass. Did Grandpa shoot these? Mm-hmm. Well, the pheasant. I shot the deer. Mom! Mom? That's messed up! You shot a deer? You killed Bambi's mom? That was you? Oh, Bambi. Okay. You know, deer and rabbits and things aren't cute cartoon characters in real life. Yes, they Out are. here, they're actually pests. Cute, innocent pests? But pests all the same. You were my age when you shot it? Younger. <laughs> Our father took us hunting during the summers when we'd stay out here. Well, mostly just me. I always did all right with hunting. I could kind of, uh, what's the word? Compartmentalize it? Mom's a psycho. I don't think August could, though. I only saw her fire a gun once. A little 22 hunting rifle. She didn't want to, but my dad wouldn't let her give up. He said we weren't heading back until August took her shot. Abuse. So she aimed and fired and missed. The deer ran off, and August cried all the way home. <laughs> that was August's first and last hunting trip. Our father didn't have much patience for that kind of, uh... He had a real thing for, you know, not letting <clears throat> your emotions get in the way. Sounds Maybe like a great it's guy. good to let your emotions get in the way sometimes. Maybe they're trying to tell you something. Take that goddamn shot. We ain't having no motions right here. We ain't got time for no motions. <coughs> right. <coughs> Voice hurts my throat. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I've had a bit of a sore throat the last couple of days. I shouldn't do that. <sighs> my physical limitations got in the way of the bit. Oh, I had some good jokes. What's Fallout? How can you be safe? Um, it's the Fallout TV show, baby. Duck and cover. A drawing. Nightshade? It was because he could only come out at night. Or stay in the shade, as I remember it. Okay, well that's spooky as hell. August was just a kid. She needed someone to talk to. Did it have to be a freaky imaginary friend who lurked in the shadows? Wait, what about you or Grandma Helen? Well, I was a teenager. I don't think I was the most, I don't know, compassionate at that age. I had my own problems. If I had a little sister and Dad died, I'd be there for her to talk to. It's different. You don't know what having a little sister is like. Are you trying to say you were justified in not helping your little sister when she was grieving after her father died? I helped. I did. I mean, we were all there for each other, but... I could have used more help, too. <clears throat> I don't think I had anything left to give. So August made a new friend for herself. One who would always listen. I just watched a horror film about imaginary friends, and it was one of the worst films I've watched in the longest time. It's literally just called Imaginary. It was so bad that I genuinely think it's a comedy. Like, I actually was cracking up at parts, and I don't think that was the intention. August's new friend. August's dad left her a special tie, a red tie. It had special powers. When August wore the special tie, she met her friend, Nightshade. He lived in the shadows and would always be there to help. August's friend, who would never go away. Gardening. Bar. You got him. Oh, look at this big pink guy. <laughs> Hi, it's me. Kurt won that for me. At the fair. Kurt? We, well, we met at the drive-in diner. <gasps> <clears throat> you had a summer fling? <laughs> I, well, was he cute? I thought he was very handsome. And he rode a motorcycle. Oh my god, a bad boy? It... Well... 
Honestly, I fell for him pretty hard that summer. It was pretty, uh... Cool? On his motorcycle? <laughs> he was very... romantic. Oh, no. <laughs> no, not like that. Well, <clears throat> a little like that. Oh, no. So, what happened? Did you break up with him, or...? Uh, I don't remember. It was just a summer thing, it doesn't really matter. Wow. Did I hit a nerve? Hey, maybe we should keep looking around for more relevant things. It's funny what people can be into and that can get them, like, into someone. Like, oh, a guy showed up on a gun. A guy showed up on a um, motorbike. Wow, he's a bad boy. He's hot. He's so cool. He's dangerous. Like, uh, he has tattoos. Like, people who say they like tattoos on someone, I always think it's kind of strange. Because I'm like, that's such a, like, not a... Uh, like, I guess it's indicative of, like, some lifestyle, but it, so many people have them now. It's like an odd kind of uh, fetishization of them. I don't know, but it's, you know, he had a motorcycle. Like, once upon a time, especially when you're younger, that stuff is like, oh, they're into this thing or they have this thing about them and I like it. Like, I can remember being young and I got, like, uh, a girl liked me because I when we met, I had a long coat on and so they were like when you came around the corner we were all like a guy in a long jacket a guy in a long jacket and that's why like we all came over and talked to you and it's like what like that's what just because i had a long jacket on that day like right okay what people are into you know darling i know i'm running from something but i've never felt so free I just crossed the border and I'm writing to you from the desk in a room at a motel that's hidden off a little side road far from the main throughway. There's more driving to do before I find us a little place to settle down, but before long I'll have a return address for you to write back to. Don't miss me too much. Helen. This is where they plan to run away to? Well, would you look at this. A postcard from the mystery man. What was he running from? Um, the mob. The mob? I don't think my mother would have gone for a mob guy. According to the Sopranos, they can be very charismatic. When they're not whacking people. Wait, you've been watching The Sopranos? Isn't that a little R-rated for you? It's one of the best shows oh, ever, yeah. Mom. Chill out. Very much so. Let's talk about your viewing habits when we get home. You're invited. August, Cindy and Fox. Someone should have cleaned this place up before they left it. Forever and ever, you know? Sheesh, what happened here? Looks like the wall gave way. Sheesh. Water damage, I guess. What is this thing? It's the water heater. Oh, that, that's why you said water damage. I get it, I'm following along. Well, it's not going anywhere now. Can we climb over it? No! God, look at all that rusty metal. I'm up on my tetanus shots, aren't I? We're not risking it. Well, what's that thingy back there? Mm, it's a maintenance hatch for getting down into the crawl space under the house. Is there any other way into the crawl space? I think there's a way to get in from around the back. Why are you acting so excited? Well, if we could get into the crawl space, we could climb back up out of that hatch and get over to that side of the mobile home to find more stuff. I'm not sure why you're using the plural here. And also, I really want to see if there's any cool, creepy stuff under there. Like a skeleton. Listen, you can give it a peek if you want, but there is no way I'm crawling under there with you. You're on your own. Hey, no problem. <clears throat> More cool, creepy stuff for me. It's mostly going to be spitters, and I would never want to be in any cruel spaces. A freaking water heater fell through the wall and we can't get around it, but there's a weird hatch in the floor. Maybe I can go under the house. There's a hatch... So we're going to crawl under here, I think. 
Can we not just like, what's this? Is this not just the other side? What's in here? That's just August's old room. Let's try and find some other way in. Okay, so through the cruel space. Let's see. You guys had a dog? I mean, this is just like beautiful, middle of nowhere, this little place. It's out there. Somewhere. That buried bootlegger gold. Uh huh. Bigfoot, too, I hear. Do you think he found the gold already? What makes you so sure Bigfoot's a he? Oh, I love it. Equal opportunity cryptids. Very forward thinking. It's 2003, Tess. Anyone can be a Bigfoot. My feet are pretty big. That's locked. Okay. There's this crawl space. Makes getting trainers that you actually want. Sneakers are an issue. And even the most boring of shoes are all very expensive. Scarecrow. I guess the crawl space is in the house, like it said. In the floor. Let's see if we can find it. To go under. Sad. Under the house. Maybe can, there's a weird hatch in the floor. Or is it here? Where is the hatch? Not seeing a hatch. Am I blind? There's a weird hatch in the floor. We don't have crawl spaces here. I don't know what I'm looking for. Must be from outside then. Right? Because crawl spaces are like under the house, yeah? In this bit. Underneath. But how'd you get in? Mm -hmm. I really like games where you just get story and walk around and click on things. This one hasn't fully grabbed me yet. I don't know if it's, you know, has it fully grabbed you? Are you invested? I feel like it could you have used maybe a stronger opening and some emotional beats to kind of... Uh, like at the moment, probably the thing I'm most interested in is this... Ah, there we go. I found it. Is the gold. Other than that, we're kind of like snooping on Granny's previous affair. And I don't know what other hooks we have. But I am enjoying it. And I'm enjoying sort of just a chilled playthrough with you. But maybe not fully invested yet. I wonder if you're feeling the same. So this is how we get into the crawl space? You keep saying we. So... This is how intrepid people with an innate sense of curiosity get into the crawl space? Among other personality traits, yes. Fine then, I'll go it alone. You're probably too frail to get in here anyway. Those creaky knees of yours. Wow. Okay, into the filthy crawl space you go. See you on the other side. Crawl space. Seems to be pretty big. It's like an old photo there or something that's gone through the cracks. Those bones. Oh, cool. Looks like a cat. It's not cool. Ooh, this is good. Mom's gotta see this. I'm writing you from our new home right on the water. I was looking and looking and realized there's no better home for us than one we could just pull up anchor and split if we needed to. I brought us a houseboat. It's really something else. Brought it from an older fellow who'd kept it perfect and was just done having to maintain it in his autumn years. There's a rumor they're going to dam this river up, but there's a long time coming if it happens at all. Now, just to get back to you 
Now, just to get you and those kids moved up here, I hope it's been a good summer, right back discreetly. Let's make plans for the big move. Something I've learned since Leo died is that being loaded with cash is the only way to live. Get ready to leave all your worries behind. Huh. And this was a picture of, the, I mean, it's very, it's a cute boat. What if, um, like, that's, this guy is her real dad, right? Like, that could be the thing. Mom, I found a way in. Hang on, I'll open the back door. Hey, Mom, I found something. Look, look. Another letter. He wanted to live with Grandma on a boat? Maybe we can figure out where the boat was by looking at the photo. It looks like, well, it looks like a boat. A houseboat. Hmm. Can't see much of the surrounding area. It's near... trees? Maybe we can look for some of those. A place in Canada with trees. That narrows it down. Okay. One of those people that does that geolocator could probably find it. Oh look, she wrote it. Cut. What's oh, wait. this about? Oh, that was the town where Kurt lived. You know, we were a summer thing, but we were planning on how we could keep seeing each other once we both went home after the summer. I guess I was feeling pretty lost. I latched onto him and held on tight. He became my plan for how I would be okay. And that didn't work out? Yeah like these things often do. So how'd you end up with Dad? Sorry? Well, you didn't end up with Kurt. How'd you end up with Dad? Oh, it was a lot of years later that I met your dad. After college, I moved back to Greenville for my bookkeeping job. It was, it was actually when I was in one of the first plays I performed in at the Andromeda. Your dad was in the audience. He hung around outside the stage door after the show and flagged me down. Cute. He said there was a problem with the production. He was so distracted by my beauty that he couldn't pay attention to anything else going on in the play. Romantic. Aww, that's so romantic. It's like something out of a rom-com. I, I found it endearing at the time. He was very persistent. <laughs> was Dad... <laughs> Big into local theater? Uh, no. He told me later that he'd actually been at the play on a date with someone else. He told her he needed to head home, then hung around the theater to talk to me. <laughs> wow. Bold. Did you find that endearing? I guess at the time I found it flattering. And a little funny. <laughs> I should have realized it was a red flag. Things that only um, good-looking people can get away with, right? Hanging around outside the theater and then being like, Hey, there's a problem with that show. I was so distracted by how beautiful you are. It's like romantic if you're into the guy or girl or whatever it is. And then imagine, you know, if it's someone that's like not attractive to you, you're like, creep, get away from me, stalker, you know? Different rules apply as to whether or not you are attractive but i guess the thing to take from that is to read is to read the room like if you want to try and attempt that kind of thing if the person gives you that reaction of like absolutely not then you have to just be like oh okay leave it it's only if people are persistent when they've clearly been giving the nod of like dude no you know if people don't have open vibes i feel like a lot of those situations are just like people have zero self-awareness of kind of understanding it you know Wait, are... Are you saying Dad cheated on you? Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. Just... Uh... You know, it's a sleazy move. So... Not the kind of thing Kurt would have done? Oh, I don't know. Uh. Ceilings coming in. 
A newspaper clipping. You're young, idealistic, and you trust easily. You have an open heart and a lot of pain to heal. Don't let someone who's more flesh than substance take advantage of that. Confidential to precious stone. Wait. This is you. Precious stone? This you. This was to you? Subtle, right? <sighs> My mother was against me and Kurt being together from the start. To be fair, I would go off to who knows where with him and sometimes not come back till the morning. Now I understand how worried she must have been as a mother. <gasps> you were a bad kid? Do you ever thank your lucky stars I'm not a bad kid? I don't know. You and Francine can stay up pretty late. <laughs> Playing The Sims and eating pizza rolls. <laughs> yeah, you kids are wild these days. Hmm. Is that mom? Now, what is this? During the summers when we'd come here, I had a summer job as a waitress at the drive-in. On roller skates? Like in the movies? Yeah, I guess. And those movies were based on reality, you know. That's hot. Bring him back. You were cute! Oh, I don't know. Oh, please, Mom, stop. You were cute then, and you're, uh, hot mom now. Uh <laughs> what? <laughs> According to the boys at school, you are my hot mom. You didn't know about this? What? No! I am not. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's great having all the boys at school talking about how hot your mom is. It's great. Regardless, this photo of you is real neat, and I think we should keep it. Sure. Bring Why back not? roller skating diners. He says, as if there was ever any even in this country, or would exist in this country. What's in here? That was my mom and dad's room. Well, just my mom's room last we were here. Well, dang it, that door stuck. I think... Look, we could twist the latch open if... I think I could get this open with a flathead screwdriver. Awesome. Where's one of those? Um... Oh, I had a little toolkit in the glove box of my van. Nice. Okay, we've got to get that open first. Going back to what we said earlier about how, you know, stuff that people find attractive, that people do or are wearing and stuff. Bit of a sucker for roller skates. <laughs> Clearly. If someone roller skated Go up to mechanics. me. Oh, mechanics! Oh, man. I forgot that August had this. I let her keep it when I moved it into the van. It would be like van. me in a long jacket. But August didn't even go to Fort State. She almost did. We were both so excited to, growing up. Don't you remember Grandma talking about how much she loved it? I remember her talking about how sexist it was. Yeah, well, everything was sexist back then. But we're a Ford State family. You'll be a triple legacy. Uh, I don't even know if I want to go to college. I don't even know if I want to go to college. What do you mean you don't know if you want to go to college? Of course you're going. I can make my own choices. What kind of choice is that? To be broke? I'm not going to be broke. I've been working really hard on my design business. And August didn't go to college. August was lucky. She's talented, but she's also lucky. When I'm 18... Look, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. It's not a discussion. Fine. Mm. Brings back memories. I was pretty much forced to go to university, to be honest. I wouldn't have chosen to, but I was the only one who had the opportunity to in, like, all of my family and all of my cousins and all of the grandchildren and children and everything else. So it was pretty much like, uh, you're going. Pick something that you want to do. You are going to do something. So I was like, oh, okay guess I will. Glad that I did. Didn't really end up doing anything with any of it, but, you know, it's whatever, I guess. The Mean Boys by August Devine. One day, August rode her bike to town because of how sunny it was. 
because it was sunny, her friend Nightshade had to follow behind her under the trees because he lives in the shade and shadows and can't come in the sun. August laughed as Nightshade ran along under the trees and she and Nightshade made jokes together. When August and Nightshade got to town, there were boys outside the general store. They saw August's special tie that made her safe, but it didn't make her safe from them. The Mean Boys came closer. The Mean Boys is like definitely a K-pop group. They said, Who are you talking to? What you wearing, stupid? August said, My dad's tie. The Mean Boys said, Your dad must be stupid. August was crying, but the Mean Boys didn't care. They laughed and laughed. August looked for Nightshade, but Nightshade couldn't help. He was trapped in the shade under the tree far away. When the mean boys went away, August went under the tree with Nightshade. August's special tie was dirty. She gave Nightshade a hug to feel better, but it didn't help enough. Poor kid. Did she get made fun of a lot? At school and stuff? I think she got picked on when she was little, but she toughened up. I guess right around this age, when we came back from our last summer trip. What changed? I don't know. Wow. Painting. Little artist. My rap name. Oh, I don't know if I agree with the advice. I mean, fair enough. Oh, I can't read it. Hang on. I've got to read some cursive. Dear August, you're upset after what happened today, and that's all right. You needed time to yourself instead of talking to me. And that's all right, too. But upset as you are, you need to remember, boys only tease girls because they like them, or because they're different. <clears throat> or because they're just little dickheads. You cannot control the cruelty of others, but you can discourage it through your own appearance and behavior, or learn to play along. No! Time to grow up now. Mother. And terrible advice! This was your literally- this was your job, was giving advice, and this is the advice you gave to your child? Also, like, boys are only mean to girls when they like them. I mean, this is old school, right? This was like the 70s or whatever, but it's that's dumb advice. Uh, I don't know if I agree with this advice. Terrible. This doesn't sound very Millie to me. Millie was just a character, honey. <clears throat> I know, but didn't she usually give advice Grandma would have given? How could you tell a little kid that getting picked on was their own fault? I don't know if that's what she meant. It's right here. She's like, if people are mean to you, you should change. What, the bullies are right? She never told me that kind of thing when girls were being mean to me at school. She just told me to be myself. I guess... Well, maybe if Mother could have gone back and given Mother. August the advice she gave you instead, she would have. I hope so. Grandparents forever trying to fix their mistakes by... Loving on the grandchildren more, being there more, you know, common. I mean, it's... When people are a parent, they're a parent for the first time. And I'm not a parent, but I can only imagine how absolutely terrifying, scary, and difficult that is every single day. That you just have to learn, right? And just do it. Like, it's your first time being alive as well. It's your first time being a parent as well. It's tough. But as a kid, you ex you think your parents know everything. You think they're gonna, they are the answer. They are the truth. They are infallible. And we all have a time in our life when we realize that our parent, guardian, whatever it is that you have in your life, is is not is you know uh, just as human as you. Uh, bootlegging. <gasps> I knew it! Knew what? This map could only be the directions to the lost bootlegger gold. Tess, this was clearly drawn by a child. Perhaps it was a particularly childlike bootlegger. Seems more like August to me. Looks like she was just playing buried treasure. Do you think there'd be anything there to dig up that was left behind? It'd be like a time capsule. Maybe she was going to come back for it later. It was her first investment. <laughs> she got started early. I don't know. Let's just go see what it is. 
Found a map to bury treasure in August's room. Could it be the fabled bootlegger gold? Probably not, but it makes might be something cool. X marks the spot near the doghouse. Right. Oh my Spirit god, Lord. in August. I have so many questions. Ouija. Oh, how fun! Wait, did they not get to use these? Good for one hayride. Michigan. Drive-in theater, nice. Oh, there's a key. Aha! This must be the key to the van! No video games back then, I guess. Poor, deprived kids. I mean, board games are awesome, let's be real. Magico. I think I'm surprised you can't open this. Alright. Time to see all of Mum's filthy little secrets. Oh, it's everything I'd imagined. It's got an ugly lamp, an acoustic guitar. A concerning scent of mold? I mean, what do you expect? It's been under this carport for 30 years. That's why I'm not coming inside. Okay, I'll just look around and get out. It is kind of gross in here. You're just looking for the screwdriver, right? Right. Don't get too nosy, all right? All right, all right. But look at all this stuff. <clears throat> wow. Mom was even into theater back then. Huh. Plectrums. Strum, strum, strum. I've got to get my guitar back out. I haven't played in a little while. Record player. Neat. Wow. Brutal, Lori. Brutal. Dear Opal, but are you getting my letters? I haven't heard from you since you told me about Kurt. I've been writing you every week. Things at the park are lame. All the fun people left, and now it's just me, Gordon, and the dorks from Sandusky. If I don't get anything back, I'm just going to assume you're too preoccupied with Kurt to write to me. At least one of us is having fun. I'll talk to you when school starts, I guess. Unless I'm too busy. Holy shit. <clears throat> Babe, this summer's been real out there, but I got a split. I'm not hip to another winter with snow. I'm on my bike, headed to Cali. Look me up if you're ever out that way. Kurt. Kurt was trying too hard. Kurt was a nerd. Hey, babe. <laughs> out as manual. Read. No, thank you. Oh, lamp. Ah, oh, alas. Not so groovy anymore. I love lamp. Well, looks like that's it. How was the stuff? Groovy as you'd hoped? Well, I found, um... The note. This. You guys didn't just drift apart at the end of the summer, did you? No. I came to work at the diner one night, and they said someone had left a note for me. And it was this stupid thing. Ouch. That sucks, Mom. I just felt like such an idiot. I put all my energy into plans. Planning how we'd be able to stay together. Planning how our life was going to be. Planning how he'd be the answer for how I was going to be okay. And then, one day, this. I don't know if I've ever cried as much as I did for the week after I got this. He seems like an asshole. Hey, language. But he was. All right, you're not wrong. There was a lesson I should have learned that summer. You can't rely on other people. What? 
If you put your trust in other people, if you expect them to be there for you, one day they won't be. That's not the lesson. <laughs> but you're right, you shouldn't. Um, so you just shouldn't do anything? So what, you shouldn't have friends or relationships? Well, no, I just mean you can care about other people, but you have to be ready for them to go away and be okay on your own when they do. Are you... You're making it sound like... Are you saying Dad left you? I thought you said you both agreed to get divorced. Mom's an avoidant. <clears throat> That's what she's saying. Well, either way, he's not here, is he? Mom, what happened? With you and Dad splitting up? He always makes it sound like... Like you wanted him to leave, but... He does? I, I mean, I... If he's telling you I wanted this, I... <laughs> <laughs> See? This is why you need to be okay on your own. Damn. If you're fine on your own, when they leave, you don't have to feel this way. Remember that. Well... I've got the screwdriver. Good. That's good. Terrible things to teach your kid, to be honest, but... Get it? You know? Um... I, get, I, I would interpret things differently as like don't look to other people to fill your cup up is kind of the thing it's not don't shut people out like everyone goes through hurt and loss and abandonment everyone gets left behind you know unless you are super amazing but, and, for some, and lucky and for some reason and have a very limited group of friends that never leave I mean it's just not going to happen whether it's friendship whether it's relationships whether it's anything Everyone's going to go through some sort of grief and heartbreak and abandonment. But it's like, don't look for people to fill your cup rather than... You can't just put up walls and not let anyone in, you know? But you got to let them in in the right way. With a little caveat, I suppose. I don't know. It's tough, isn't it? It's hard to not put the walls up. But, um, just living your life that way is like, don't trust, don't believe anyone. Um, kind of thing. Well, howdy there. What's your name, buddy? Wah, wah, wah. Now we can get in here, right? Ah, door. We meet again. But this time, I'm ready for you. Hey, good work. Thanks, Mom. Hmm. Astrology. Darling, now wait. It sounds like someone's getting cold feet all of a sudden. We had a plan. Leo dies, I make tracks for the border, and when the dust settles, you follow me. This doesn't work if only one of us makes tracks. I've got everything you could ever hope for up here. A place of our own, a quiet little town where nobody knows our names, and a pile of cash that'll keep us going till who knows when. The kids will love it too. What kid wouldn't want to live on a boat? Get these silly ideas out of your head, get back on track, and we'll be together soon. Now listen here, woman. Get these silly ideas out of your head and get it back on track. <laughs> this is definitely how that was delivered. Would you have loved living on a boat? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I wonder what age he thought I was. He couldn't have thought a teenage girl would want to... Wait. I, I hadn't even thought of that. My mother was just going to take me and August, and we were all going to run off to Canada? I mean, of course she wasn't just going to leave us behind, but... Sounds like Grandma had some big plans worked up. Well, look, he said she started having cold feet. And she must have written him back and said she wasn't sure if she could come after all. You think she realized that maybe her kids wouldn't have been so happy moving onto a boat with some random man in Canada? Can I start calling him Canada Man? You can call him whatever you want. This is so strange. Love makes you do crazy things. Love or grief? Both? Hmm. Oh, my mom loved this desk. 
I remember when she brought it home from the flea market. Jeez, how many desks did Grandma have? <sighs> uh, kind of a lot, I guess. I mean, she was a writer. She liked to move around. Well, let's see what she was hiding in here. Ugh, it's locked. Hmm. This gives me an idea. The key. The little key? From Grandma's diary? <gasps> right. Helen, you can't just leave me here. I did all this for you. All for you. And those are my kids too, you know. I have a right. I need to was crossed out and then just have a right. Your kids? Pierre. What's that? What? I'm sorry. What? What does he mean? When he says those are his kids? Knew it. Uh, I... Was Grandpa Leo not your real dad? I... Could that have been why he was trying to run away with you in August and Grandma Helen? I can't even imagine. Look, look, Mom. Look. This one. This note. It has a return address. Pierre Lautrec. Box 9. Hop to Lake. Carndale, Ontario. Do you want to check it out? Do you want to go check it out? What? No. No? But- Tess, we already drove however many hours up here and dug around getting dirty and all this stuff. I'm not driving us to Canada based on some return address from over 30 years ago. We have the rest of the house to pack up and I still need to call the electric company to schedule our end of the service, which I probably should have done sooner and- Mom, stop. You're going to pass up a trip to Canada? Land of the polite, home of the reasonable? We could see a moose. I've never seen a moose. Sixteen years, nary a moose. I've lived a life of deprivation, mother. Oh, you poor thing. Mom, all jokes aside... Yes, please. If we don't do this now, if we don't go up there and at least try to find out who this guy really was, who your father really was... When are we ever going to do it? We're right here, a stone's throw away, on the cusp of discovery. The cusp of moose country. I wasn't going to say it, but yeah, that too. You're just hoping we'll find that hidden treasure. Come on! If we do track down this address, we might not find anything. But we could find out who your father really was. Who we really are. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Okay, listen. Yes. Hey, I I'm not doing this because of your sterling rhetorical skills. You didn't win this one. I just happen to agree with you. I do want to know who my mother might have been mixed up with, and, and why she never told me about it, and who my real father is. And if we go check out this address, we might find nothing. But we might find something. So, if one more day of driving is all it takes to find out one way or the other... Then why not, right? Right. Glad I could convince you. No, you just happened to be right. Exactly. Glad you came around to see things my way in the end. Okay. Should we get going? It's getting dark. Yeah. Let's find somewhere to stay for the night. We'll look up directions. Get back on the road in the morning. Hotel night. We're getting room service. Thank you, Mom. Best weekend ever. But we didn't find that hidden fortune you were so excited about. Yeah. Maybe it's on the other side of the border. <laughs> Maybe. Come I mean, on, let's get out of here. I'm thinking this guy is going to be the bootlegger, right? Because it's like, she, why did she have books on it? He's talking about... He's got lots of money, he has to run for the border, and like, all of this stuff, you know? So... Doesn't it kind of make sense? That perhaps it is... He is the one? Sympathy. Card. Thoughts are with you.
Sorry for your loss. The Saltsman's. Wedding picture. Some books. Old pencil. Alright, hit the road. Then. An Easter goose. Happy Easter, everyone. What about the uh, prize that was here by the dog thing, though? In the back garden with the trowel, no? You ready to unearth this mystery? You are really getting into the mess on this trip. Crawling through old crawl spaces, digging in the dirt. It's for the sake of the adventure, Mom. Don't let me stop you. Time capsule time. Aww. Picture of them sad, hugging under the tree. A special tie. I guess. Goodbye, Nightshade. Thank you for being my friend. I'll miss you. Oh. So this is where August buried her feelings. Mom! Come on, it's sad. What? I don't know. Maybe we should keep it. Maybe August would want it. I think so too. We can just put it in the car. Welcome back, Nightshade. Uh, thank you. Who said that? Did you have an imaginary friend? What was it? What were they called? What did they do? I don't remember having one, as far as I know. I feel like I did have one, but it's probably like a really generic one. And honestly, thinking in my memory, I'm not sure if I really had one or if I heard that people had one and I was like, I want one and kind of like made it up in my head, you know? rather than actually thought I had one, just whether I was just like, I need one, so I have this one. So I feel like if I actually had one, I'd probably remember it, right? But then my memory's garbage. I don't remember a lot from being young, so. All right, time to order that room service. Uh, this is not the kind of place that has a room service. I'm sorry. What? Hotels do room service. This is a motel. Just like the summer place was a mobile home and not a trailer. Right. But the other way around. But there's a restaurant and lounge right next door, though. I'm gonna head down there and get us dinner, okay? And I'm going to have a cocktail while I wait. It's been a long day. I'll be back with something to eat soon. Well, all right. That's almost like room service. What do you want to eat? Oh! Um, burger? Um, burger it is. Do your homework. An um, burger. I know I should have brought my backpack. Mum expects me to do my homework. I guess there's not much else to do cooped up in this motel room. Do we actually get to do homework? Because that would be kind of cute. Let's check our texts. Hey, Tessa Bear. Hope you had a good day. Busy with some work late tonight, but we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thinking of you always, Dad. Hi, Dad. What's up, Tessa Bear? I had a question about your mum. I want to get all the deets. I feel a bummer in coming, but okay. You always said mum wanted you to leave, and that's why you're not living with me anymore, with us anymore, but mum said you were the one that wanted to leave. I'm confused. She said that, huh? I'd say it was mutual, kid. I had a big opportunity out here. I had to take it. I understand why your mum didn't want to come along, and that's okay. That's why you left home and quit Video Galaxy and everything? It's not the same without you here, or at the store. I'm sure the store's even better without me. Who wants their dad as their boss? You made the store so fun. The window displays, the Halloween costume contest, the movie quote trivia, the new manager's boring. What is your big opportunity out there? You know I headed out here for a new biz venture, I'm in the investment stage. Can't wait to tell you more about it, but you wouldn't feel comfortable till I know it's gonna pan out. I want to make sure everything's perfect when I tell you more. Remember when you were little and you worked on that book you drew me for weeks and wouldn't let me peek at it till it was all done? I've still got that book right here with me. You didn't want me to see till I had it till you had it all perfect. It's just like that. Okay. You understand, don't you, kiddo? Yeah, I can't wait to hear more. 
soon. Gotta get back to it. Love you, Tessa Bear. Francine. Hey, Frankie, we survived the abandoned summer home. How haunted was it? A little... How is somewhere a little haunted? I saw a ghost. It was just the little one. Aw, baby. Wait, if there was a ghost baby, that sounds extremely haunted. Oh no. Speaking of spooky, how did your mum react to you telling her about Nevada? Shut up, I didn't tell her. Why are you so obsessed with that? You need to tell her. What if she doesn't let you go? I'm gonna go. She'll let me go. Do it now. When the time's right. When? I don't know. Did you find what you were looking for? Yes and no. We're heading to Canada. What? We found some stuff out about who my grandpa might have really been. We're gonna see if we can find out more about him. You might be part Canadian? Yeah, quarter maple syrup running through my blood. I'll call and tell you about it when we're home. Reception out here's bad. We're in a weird motel. It sucks. It's old. It smells like this mildew. It's not even room service. How uncivilized. Well, have you looked around the motel room? Is there anything weird in there? Probably. If I find anything, I'll text you about it. Mm. Can I put the TV on? Oh, how lovely. Dirt-flavored water. No thanks. No channels. Why would anyone drink decaf? I don't want to do my homework just yet. Let me look around. What is that on there? Just scratches? Dots? The bibble. Draw opening and closing. ASMR. Fluxetine for Helen. Is that for mum? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Definitely stealing these. Well, I guess I'll just do my homework. Doesn't seem like there's much snooping to be done in a motel. Hey, it's burger time. How's that homework coming along? Fine. How was the restaurant? Ugh, overpriced. But I guess that's the price you pay for convenience. Here's your burger. Thanks. Enjoy. I'm gonna call August. Tell her I said hi. August? Guess where I am? At a motel in Poetan. <laughs> Tess and I took a little road trip. She says hi. We paid a visit to the old summer house. You remember the summer house? Mobile home. Yes, it's still there. Anyway, we came away with some questions about mom and dad. It's Burger's my rival. I will defeat it. Hmm. I have vanquished the mighty Burger. I just... do you think... could dad have... Yeah, she's here. Hold on. She wants to talk to you. I'm going out for a smoke, back in a few. Hello, Teresa. Hi, Aunt August. This is all... it's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, that's one word for it. How do you feel about it? I feel like if you're a kid, you probably think it's awesome where you're like, oh, I've got like some interesting secret backstory because it's your granddad. Whereas if it's like your actual parent, like mum must be going through it when you're like, my dad's not my dad. But if you find out your granddad might not be your granddad and you've got some secret blood, you're like, whoa, cool. I think it's pretty exciting. Yeah. I mean, it's a bigger deal for you and mom. I just think... I don't know, it's just kind of... It's like seeing a whole new side of Grandma. 
now that she's gone. Yeah, I was still pretty young when our dad died, so I think it's a lot harder on your mom than on me. I never really knew him. Hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I've spent enough on therapy to almost be over it. Did you guys find anything out there? I haven't been since we were kids. Your nightshade. We found your old friend, Nightshade. Oh, Nightshade. I'd forgotten about him. Kind of a spooky name. <laughs> yeah. I was a spooky kid. You know, our dad dying really did shake me up. Nightshade was to try and fill that void, I guess. That must have been hard. Yeah. What about the house? What was it like? It, uh... It was pretty beat up. Yeah. I'm surprised it was still standing. I guess part of me hoped we could just move out there. <laughs> move out there? Oh my gosh. You're breaking my heart. You'd rather live in the middle of nowhere than in Chicago? What? With me, in the townhouse. Didn't your mom say? No. What about mom? Can can she stay with you? Of course, both of you, but she doesn't want to. What do you mean? She... <sighs> Look, you should talk to her about it. It isn't my place. Why didn't... Oh, hold on. Work is calling. Uh, I gotta go. Love you, Teresa. L love you too, Anne August. Too proud. Perhaps. I gotta help my dad with dinner, have a good drive to Canada, don't let the moose bite. So mom doesn't want us to, wait, what's this? Increase turnout with Andromeda, improve word of mouth, t-shirts, posters in local schools, actors, directors. Find mom, go to bed. And Jocelyn is looking at him, and it's so obvious that she forgot her line. And of course she did, because she only got off book a few days before. And he's just staring at her. Uh-huh. And Todd needs her to say it, otherwise the whole scene makes no sense, and it's dead quiet. It's opening night! And so then, she just says, Who are you? The Pirate of Penzance? Tess. What? Are you even listening to what I'm saying? Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm listening. If you want to just drive quietly for a while, that's fine. I can do that. When did the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie come out? Gotta be early 2000s, right? Let me see. Was it known before that? Dun dun da dun dun da dun dun da da dun 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 da da dun dun da da dun dun da da dun. Started in 2003. Gosh, this drive so boring. I wonder what's going on with Dad and Francine. Directions. Wait, where's my cell phone? Did I put it in the glove box? Oh no. What? My cell phone. I left my cell phone at the hotel. Are you sure? Yes, I looked everywhere. It's not in the glove box. It's not in my backpack. I, I don't have the charger either. I, I must have left it Bummer. on the charger at the hotel. We have to go back and get it. Tess, we have been driving for over an hour Ooh. already. We are not driving all the way back to the motel just so you can have your phone for one day. You don't understand. Hmm. It might be gone if we don't go back for it. I'm sure it'll be in the motel lost and found. We can pick it up on the way home. Mom, we have to turn around. We haven't been driving for an hour. We yes, can... we have. We left one hour and 18 minutes ago. Well, we can drive faster on the way back. I am not breaking the speed limit and getting pulled over and getting a ticket because you can't wait till tonight to get you know, your... No, I, I wouldn't have left my phone there if it wasn't for you. 
you were lying to me. And I was so distracted. And now, and now you won't even go back and... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was lying to you? When was I lying to you? You never told me about the pills you're taking or about August. I want to know what those pills are. You never told me about the pills you're taking. The ones you found when you went through my suitcase last night? Well, how did you... You didn't hide it very well. I could tell you'd been in there. I'm nosy. If you're going to snoop through somebody else's stuff, at least put a little work into covering your tracks. Yeah. Yes. It's Prozac, Tess. Oh. But since you apparently need to know... With everything going on, I need a little help, and I'm not ashamed of it. No, no, but I am no very should disappointed you, be. you for violating my privacy. Sorry. So that's what this is about? My prescription medication? Um, no. You didn't tell me we could stay with August. <sighs> Why would you just lie to me and say August was unwilling to help us? I didn't... I didn't lie. I... She doesn't want to help. Helping would be buying the house. And when I asked, she said no. But she offered to let us stay with her. And I said no. There's a million reasons why that's a bad idea. At least we'd be sleeping in a bed and not a car. We aren't going to sleep in the car. I'll figure something out. Aren't you concerned? We have no plan. You have no plan. I have a plan. I... Money might be tight, but it's not like I don't have a job. <sighs> if you and Dad were still together, where do you think we'd be right now? Uh, why are you so disinterested in my business? Why don't you like August? Why don't you like August? Excuse me? Where did you get that idea? You always act like she's a pain when she's just trying to help. It's like you're jealous of her. First of all, I am not jealous of her. It's a lot easier to make money when you live by yourself. Especially if you're so far away, your own family is an afterthought. I had to do all the work for Grandma. August just stayed in Chicago. You're making her sound so selfish. She's not like that. You've never lived with her, Tess. It's not gonna be like your little vacation. August thinks she knows what's best for everyone. I can't be around someone like that every day. Wow, I can't imagine what that feels like. Do you think you're the only person with problems and the rest of us are just running around doing whatever? You're exhausting. No wonder dad left. Ooh. Don't bring your dad into this. Don't say Why that. Why can't we talk about dad? Actually talk about dad for once. The divorce. The... I don't want to have this discussion right now. Fine. You don't want to have this discussion? I'll just find out when I go to Nevada. Tess. What? When I see dad when I go next month. You're not going to Nevada next month. Yes, I am. I already have the tickets. What do you mean? With what money? From my business, I'm going- From your business. I can't believe you. That you would go behind my back? If you just told me what was happening, I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have to ask Dad to tell me the truth. The truth? Please. Oh, so that's what this is all about, huh? You want to know what's the truth? Fine. Here's the truth. The divorce wasn't mutual. I divorced him. You... Your father announced he was going to Reno to become a full-time gambler oh. and expected me to say, Oh, sure, honey. Feel free to abandon me and my daughter and dying mother to try out your next get-rich-quick scheme. What? What kind of person would think a marriage could work with that kind of distance? So then I have to be the bad guy, just like always. He gets to run away and be the fun parent, and I have to be the mean mom and do all the work. So I divorced him. I'm sure he's just as proud of his new job as I am, and that's why you're hearing about it now. Um. So sure, go to Nevada, ask him all about it. I'm sure he'll tell you the truth. Yikes. That is not the type of way you want all that information to come out. Not only did I lose my phone, I got in a fight with mom. It sucks. I guess we're just gonna sit here in silence till we get to the houseboat. What a fun road trip. That was sarcastic. I mean... You went there, like, saying, oh, no wonder dad left. That is harsh. Oh. Oh. It's a dead end. It's not a dead end. We just have to get out and walk. Where, Tess? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. 
I think it's through here. Thanks for the help, by the way. <sighs> Look, I know you're upset. We both are. Bit of a weird. Let's just cut get in to arrive here. See what we can find about Pierre and get out before I change my mind. I thought Agreed. we would have had longer, like, sat in the car awkwardly, you know, after a fight. Looks like we made it to the houseboat we saw in the picture. Most likely owned by Mystery Man Pierre. Whatever we find better be worth it. Ha uh ha. -huh. Summer. Oh. Doesn't look like I would expect to see anyone here if it's all graffitied and... Wow, it's not even on the water anymore, but I guess we could find information about this guy. Larry Shack. Lautrec. That's him. Lautrec? That's the name of the mystery man. Think he's got mail? Hmm. Guess we'll never know. It's locked anyway. Maybe that's for the best. Tampering with other people's mail is illegal. I bet we find a key. And then we come back out and we find some mail and it's going to be from grandma and it'll be like the secrets of everything, you know? That's what I think. How do you get down to the houseboat and what's in Larry's shack? Wait, I can't go this way? What? There's just an invisible wall here. That's a really odd way of stopping you from going down there. Probably got to like put a bridge. How are we supposed to get on board? Maybe there's something around here we can use. This. This is so stupid. We're trespassing. We need to go back home. But we. What if you fall off and break your neck, Tess? Or who knows what's even in that boat? Or if the floorboards are all rotted? Or or. But we're already here, and the trailer home- Mobile home. The mobile home was fine. I, I just think, if we go back now, what's the point? Don't you want to know what happened to Grandma? To find Pierre? Mm. Okay, fine. You stay here, and I'll see what I can find. No, you can't go in without me. Don't tell me what I can't do, Tess. No matter how grown up you think you might be, I'm still your mother. I- you're right. I'm sorry. I just... We've done all of this so far together. I just don't want to give that up. <sighs> Alright. We'll do it together. But I should go first. No, I should go. No way! What if you fall off? I could say the same to you. I should go first. I'm not gonna let my poor, aged mother walk across a rickety bridge before I'm sure it's safe. Let's flip a coin. Call it. Heads or tails. Ooh. Ah. Heads? Heads. I won! Just be careful <clears throat> and stay away from the edge! Down we go. Been eating some snackies. Having some brewskies. Is there anything around this back way? Oh. E evil? Evil- Evilly? Evil- Evil- Hmm? What you got? Wow, he had a bedroom set up for the kids. You tell him, Grandma. Yeah, not one to mince words. All those years of writing advice columns paid off, I guess. Kind of nice that she was thinking about you guys, too. Not just uprooting your life, dumping you in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I can't imagine what it would have been like to grow up here. <laughs> You'd have to learn French. Uh -huh. <gasps> Sacre bleu. <sighs> oh no, it's already happening. 
Please don't go on about the silly ideas in my head. My concerns are far from silly. This affects all of us. You say we'll have everything we could have for, but I'm not the one who decided to run across the border and have silly little Helen pick up her entire life and her children's lives at the drop of a hat to follow, no matter how much money was involved. I hope for things that money can't buy. Treasured friendships I've held since I was a girl. My relationship with my parents and my siblings. Satisfying work where I get to help people. My children to grow up in the loving company of their grandparents and their friends. These are the things you ask me to give up and for what? Isolation? An unfamiliar place? A leaky boat? Money to spend on what? What does it matter if everything else is lost? Are we not gonna... Are we just gonna ignore the unopened present? Life jackets... What if it's just a skeleton of a man sat in a chair in there? Pierre the pirate. Oh, maybe he was the robber. A burglar man. The burglary ring! Mom, Grandma's boyfriend here was a bank robber. <sighs> Why else would he have this? Maybe my mother... sent it to him. For what? To keep him abreast of current events. Oh, come on, Mom. Grandma had a thing going with a bank robber. How cool is that? Well, okay, they didn't rob any banks. It was the jewelry counters at department stores and things like that. Department store robber doesn't quite have the same ring to it. And it wasn't robbery. It was burglary. What's the difference? A robbery is when you take something from someone under duress. A burglary, you take it when they're unaware. I think. You think? Listen, it's been a while since I've brushed up on my criminology. And why are they so sure it was men? What? It says the men broke into the store, but there were no witnesses. So how do they know it was men? You're thinking lady robbers. Like Catwoman. <laughs> I like it. Very cinematic. Do you think Grandma could have helped? Are you seriously asking if I think my mother was an accomplice in all this? Why not? Why not? She had two kids at home, and I just don't see it. Seems like there was a lot about Grandma you weren't seeing. Excuse me? Sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. Too far. No, I mean, you know, maybe that's what she wanted me to think. I didn't know about Pierre, after all. Don't push it, kid. The ledger. Supplies for the girls, craps game, groceries, clothes, bedding. Boy, he really burned through it. I can't imagine just spending $40,000 on nothing. Well, some of it was on this boat. Yeah, seems like he really loved it. Can you imagine Grandma living here? Can you imagine August living here? Maybe then she would have been a famous painter, because she would have, like, had to paint a bunch of stuff to make it less ugly. For sure. <laughs> and you and Grandma would have had to fish every day. This is a very tempting scene you're painting. I'm imagining something like Little House on the Prairie, but on a boat. Little houseboat on the river? Rolls off the tongue. Also, I thought we rolled, like, um, flipped a coin to see who was going to come in here, but then, like, Mum's in here anyway. Supposed to stay outside, Ma. Uh, uh, uh. What's the point of opening the cabinets if there's nothing in them? <laughs> Little houseboat. <sighs> Snooping. Might need that. Okay, nothing. <clears throat> Attention, every. Oh, man, what? This doesn't work. Should have seen that coming. Megaphones are so much fun when you're a kid. Boy, really getting into the sea captain persona, aren't we? Did the boat ever even leave this dock? Tobacco. 
Right. So... And that was the front. So maybe from here is like the upstairs different? On this houseboat? For the safe? Oh no, it's a dehumidifier. Gentlemen Magazine. A 12-page pictorial on the girls of Iceland. Novella Istanbul by Night by author Richard Volpe. Winter Campus Fashions. Gentlemen Interviews. Director J.R. Ritter. Fiction by Rick Baker Norris and Robert Droate. Humor by Hal Quinn and Ken McKay. Wow. Cool. Tess, don't touch that! Why not? It's just as grimy as anything else in this boat. Plus, I want to find out what the winter campus fashions were in 1968. Ugh, you don't know where that's been. It's literally been right here for 30 years. I mean before that. Like, <sighs> never mind. And I think it was fringe jackets. The winter campus fashions in 1968? And patterned tights. But really, put that down. It's filth. this grandma? Wow, this is from when grandma was really young. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen this one. You look a lot like her. <laughs> really? I always thought I looked more like my father. Um, maybe you were just imagining things? What? Oh, you mean because he might not have been my father? Hmm. Huh. I suppose I can see the resemblance now that I think about it. You have her smile. Hmm. Oh, put me to desktop. I was surprised to receive another letter from you so soon. A houseboat. It's a romantic thought, living right on the water, but don't you suppose it might be a bit small for both of us and two children, including a teenager? Couldn't you have written to me before making this decision? We're still here waiting for the heat to die down. While I'm excited to start a new life afresh, I've begun to rack up worries. How will the children react? With all they've already been through. What do you suppose my parents will think, us just disappearing? My poor mother already lost a son-in-law. Won't people come looking for us? Are you sure there's no other way? A letter from Grandma. I really Can think you she was a robber. If my mother had actually moved us up here to stay. Sorry, burglar. I'd be Canadian. You wouldn't even exist. Whoa. What? Well, who knows if I would have had a daughter if my whole life had changed back then? I certainly wouldn't have met your father. Wow. So, this is like looking into an alternate reality. I'd like to live in another reality. Like what? Hmm. One where we were really rich, and you could fix up the Andromeda and make every play there amazing? Tess. And we could keep Grandma's house and make it all perfect, like better than it's ever been? There's no way to that reality from here. You don't know that. So this is his office. I received your latest letter. This is my final response. You say you did all this for me, but you didn't. Everything you've done, you did for yourself. You were the one who was unsatisfied with our home, our income, and always wanted more. You were the one who made the decision to get more money through reckless illegal means. You were the one who decided to run to Canada to save your own skin without even telling me until it was too late to do anything but follow along. I'm not following along anymore. You say these are your kids too? Of course they are, but they're my children as well. I'm here with them every day, comforting their grief, trying to console them over the loss of their father, trying my very hardest to keep up the ruse. But I'm getting used to it, used to doing this on my own, used to speaking up for myself, to living this new life. I'm regaining my footing. I'm starting to feel okay. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. So I guess that's it. Grandma had enough time on her own. Without Grandpa, without Pierre, she realized she liked things better that way. Can you blame her? No. No, not at all. It was her chance to have her own independence. 
And who would want to give up their whole life, everything they know, just for some guy and some money? <sighs> People have done worse for less. Yeah, but Grandma had a pretty good life, didn't she? Her advice column, her art, her kids, her house. Maybe she just needed a little time to herself to realize how good she had it. A key. Looks like a mailbox key. Ah, I oh, knew it. I was hoping that would turn up. It's gonna be a letter that he never you got. He's so nosy sometimes. If it's in there, that means he never got it. So it's gonna be a message that he never got to see. Okay. So there's nothing else in here. Cool. Nobody to spy on, though. Binoculars. Received 3000 in exchange for the houseboat. $3,000? For a houseboat? Are you saying that's a lot or a little? A little. A little? Only $3,000 for a boat you can live on? It's a house and a boat. That's, that's two whole things for just $3,000. Some people don't even have one thing. It does seem like he probably got a pretty good deal. Do you think the boat had something wrong with it? Maybe Pierre just drove a hard bargain. Travel expenses, gas, postcards, lunch, motel, six pack of beer, dinner, burger, stamps, breakfast, liquor. Damn, 40 grand. We've definitely found our man. This must have been from when he drove up here. Imagine spending six dollars on a steak lunch. Or seven dollars for a tank of gas. Did people just drink more back then? <sighs> yeah, I think so. But this is a lot, even for 1968. Mm. Captain's hat. I'd be taking that. And then that's just down to where we were. Okay. Let's go open the mail. See what we got. <laughs> it's the best way back up. Probably through here. Do you kind of wish this was developing past find a letter, call mum, hear what mum has to say, find a letter, call mum, hear what mum, you know, find an object, call mum, find a key, call mum. Um, I almost feel like that's breaking up the pace a little bit. In a way, I would have rather just played as mum and had me find things in the voiceover say stuff. I don't, I, I don't know if we need a conversation every time, right? It's, maybe it's just me. I, I just, to me, it's kind of pulling me slightly out of it. What, is that just a, okay, there we go. Fishing shack in here. I don't see any infos or anything, though. I like to fish, I guess. Seems like this was maybe his kitchen. Just an additional shack on the side with nothing in it. Caution, caution, caution. Lovely view, though. Looks like Pierre tried to mail this, but he messed up the postage or something. Ah. Ooh, let's crack this bad boy open. Wait, opening other people's mail? I don't know, Tess. Come on. Oh, come on, Mom. Live a little. We've already come so far. We can't just stop now, when we're so close to the truth. I suppose you have a point. Let's see what we've got here. Sheriff's Department? What? Did he... He confessed? I wonder if he tried to drop Grandma in it at the same time. Let's see. Uh, okay, so that's just the front. Next. To whom it may concern, I confess my culpability for a spate of burglaries which resulted in the theft of almost one half a million dollars. I worked as a property inspector for Glean County for ten years. 
At a poker game in 1966, I was approached by a man interested in trading blueprints and my knowledge for cash. He and a few others targeted department stores and other businesses that carried large amounts of cash overnight. The relationship developed and I became more and more involved. I was given 10% of the proceeds from the robberies in exchange for information. So, property inspector? So, dad, granddad was in on it? As time went on, the stores they chose to hit became riskier and riskier. I had no way to back out of the arrangement, as they had not threatened only my safety, but that of my family as well. Seeing no other option, I falsified a death certificate with papers I lifted from the county office. Wait. I left my wife and daughters to just cross the border on a- <gasps> His granddad di didn't die. Granddad was robbing the place. It is your father. And a mystery man, because he changed- Ah! Oh. I left my wife and daughters to cross the border under an assumed name, giving them instructions to follow me. They never did. I wish that crossed out regret having asked them to. What little of my stolen profits remain, I have destroyed. My wife, Helen, knew nothing of my crimes until it was too late. She went along with the story of my death. She had no other choice. She's innocent. My decision to involve myself in this series of crimes was mine alone. Wow, I ask only that you leave my wife and daughters alone. This is my confession, Leonard Lambros. That's actually a really cool twist. Damn. So Pierre was my dad? He wrote this whole confession, but it never made it. It's been here ever since. I can't believe it. Well, it says right there. I... No, I mean rhetorically, Tess. Jeez. Right, right. Uh, I... <laughs> so my mother wasn't having an affair at all. Or whatever this would have been. Not except with Grandpa's secret identity. <laughs> so my father ha hadn't died. When we thought he'd had a heart attack, he was just here, on this dock. We never got to know him. He, he was just a car ride away. August and I suffered over something that never even happened. Yeah, I'm really sorry, Mom. For your whole life, you'd thought your dad had just died, and you had to live with that. That really sucks. <sighs> I can't believe I... I can't believe he just abandoned us. All this time, he was here. He gave up his family, his children. For an old boat and some booze. I wish I could have talked to him. Just one more time, and my mother living a lie for the rest of her life. I can't, I can't even imagine. I just wish I could have talk to her about it while she was alive mm. I just wish you could have been there for her yeah if we could have just she didn't have to carry all this alone I can't believe she would do that to us lie to us her whole life why didn't she say anything even when we were all grown up maybe Maybe she was trying to protect you. Yeah, maybe. August was so little. But I was old enough to know the truth. I just wish we would have talked. So, that's it? He spent all his money, tried to send this confession, and disappeared, and he never came back? Do you think he could still be alive? <sighs> I don't know. Honestly, I... I honestly don't care. It doesn't really matter, does it? Either way, he's gone. You don't want to keep going? Maybe we could find- No, I think we've found enough. Yeah. Where could an I'm old sorry, man no. with no money even go, really? He pretended to die. <laughs> but he really just left me, like everyone else. I didn't leave you. Well, maybe not yet. But your dad. <laughs> I thought you said you were the one who kicked dad out. I mean, well, it wasn't quite like that. I guess, listen, I'll give you the full story in the car. I'm freezing out here. Yeah, me too. Tess, thanks for doing this. 
for coming with me. Of course. And for pushing me to find out what happened. Just doing my job. I know I haven't been the best mom lately, but, but I am so lucky to have such an incredible, kind, oh, mom, <laughs> beautiful, hardworking, Stop, stop. You make me cry. <laughs> Just such an amazing daughter. I love you, Mom. Hugs. I love you too, honey. We love hugs. Cool little twist. Back in the car. This is nice. See, like I'd like more like this. This is really peaceful. I like the sound of being in a car, as I've said before. It's nice. Hey mom. I was thinking about something. I wonder what grandma would say about all this. <laughs> Literally should have called this Good game question. Hey Mom. What do you think? I don't think she'd be too happy. Now, girls, I hid those private things away so people wouldn't find them. I don't know why you couldn't leave well enough alone. Well, if you didn't want people to find it, maybe you should have gotten rid of it. Well, okay. Maybe I did want you to find it. A little bit. So you asked about what happened with me and Dad. Uh-huh. Well, your dad, you know, was always looking for the next thing. Always had a new idea to try that was going to fix all his problems. Our problems. And for a while, it was the video store. And then that sales thing. And then he decided that he was gonna be a professional poker player. Is that what you meant by full-time gambler? Yeah. I mean, not really a gambler. He's not playing with his own money. It's all tournaments and stuff. They're playing as a sport. That's... I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, for a dad that, like, left to do it, and left his family and that uh, that is insane that's insane didn't anybody tell him the house always wins oh i did but this isn't playing poker against the house it's against other players there is no house believe me i heard all his justifications there were plenty and even though he's been gone for a couple years he's never told me why he's really out there why wouldn't he tell me maybe deep down he's not so proud of it Maybe he just didn't want to tell me till after he'd hit it big? So he chose right when Grandma really started getting sick and we moved in to take care of her to go off and follow his dream? He must really like poker. He likes it. But I wouldn't say that's the real reason he left. The split came at a really hard time. The theater was doing worse and I was spending all my time there. Then your grandmother started really declining and needed more and more help. I think... When I decided we needed to move in with her, to care for her, well, being a full-time caretaker for his mother-in-law was not something your father ever signed up for. So he left for Nevada. Pig. He wanted to stay married. Said we could make it work. But by that time... It was already over. Yeah, exactly. I realized that this... This was a pattern that would never really end. Do you blame me for ending it? No. Like, what a jerk. Like, this is not some situation ship. This is her husband and the mother, the father of your child. And, um, she has to take care of her sick mom. And he, like, I get that he didn't sign up for moving in and being a carer, and that's fine. Like, he he should have at least stayed nearby. He should have been in there. But if, you know, for whatever reason, he should have stayed nearby, to take that opportunity to then leave and to be, like, a poker player is... Uh, it's bullshit. No, I get it. You needed his support, and he just... ran away. Yeah. Kind of forced your hand. Yeah. Kind of. That sucks, Mom. But I do miss him. Bad. I'm sorry... Daddy issues the game. Oh. I should have talked to you first. I guess I thought... I don't know, that 
dad, like, explain everything to me in a way that made sense and that he was living some great life out there. No, you... you shouldn't apologize. I'm sorry I didn't tell you earlier. I... I guess I was embarrassed. That I would have married such a ding-dong. <laughs> Professional gambler. Ding -dong. I didn't want to have to say it out loud. Need to put one of these on that. But I guess you can't keep running away from your problems forever. Ding now dong. I have these tickets and I don't know what to do. Go see him I anyway. think you should go. Yeah. To Reno? Yeah. I think it would be good for you to hear his side of the story. We may not always get along, but he's not a bad guy. And you guys have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. You should spend some time with him. I think it'd be good for both of you. Uh, are, are you sure, Mom? Yeah, I'm sure. Good, Mom. But it's not over Thanksgiving, right? Oh, God, no. And Miss August's mac and cheese? Fat chance. I'm proud of you, Mom. For what? What do you mean, for what? You're kick-ass. How many moms would stop packing up their house to drive their daughter all over Michigan to search for a family secret? Or run their own business, run a community theater? That's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe not the brightest idea from a financial perspective, but it is pretty cool. Thanks, honey. But... And that means a lot. And speaking of businesses, that's pretty impressive that you made enough money to buy a plane ticket. Yeah, it's exciting that people are willing to pay me to design websites. Well, I've seen what you can do, and you do a great job. Oh, thanks, Mom. I'm serious. When I saw your web stuff, I mean, I don't always know what I'm looking at, but I know it looks good. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> An artist's eye, just like your grandma. And my mom. But maybe it skipped over my aunt. <laughs> Come on, her painting wasn't that bad. <laughs> well, I guess... I guess I always imagined that you'd go to Ford like grandma and me. It's silly, but... But it's not fair of me. God knows I didn't do everything my mom wanted me to do. Hmm. Like seeing Kurt? Yeah, exactly. Amongst many other things. But yeah, it's hard to let go. To see you as an adult, not just my baby girl. Mom. You were so cute back then. Even cuter than now. Stop. And you had the biggest head. Everyone said it. Everyone said, that's the baby with the biggest head. Wow. Okay. Bowling ball head. The bowling ball baby. Complex. Yep. And it was all your dad. On my side, we all have perfect, tiny little heads. Like golf balls. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think about the whole August thing? Moving in with her? Yeah. I guess it's a big decision moving to Chicago yeah that's putting it mildly would you want to move in with her hmm whatever you want to do mom so I mean it seems fine it seems like a good choice even if it's just for a while at least we'd have a place to stay yeah that's what I'm thinking too are you worried about the theater or my school these days, I'm worried about everything, but I'm confident, too. Confident we can figure it out. Yeah. We've been through so much this last year. You've been through so much. I just, I have to have faith that we'll continue to make things work. Yeah, me too. I will say, August's house is pretty nice. Her bathtub is the size of my bedroom. Yeah, I mean, it'll be worth it for the bathtub alone. We should call August and tell her about all this. Oh, hey August, guess what? Our dad really is our dad. <laughs> you can sleep easy. We're not French Canadian after all. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we end up doing, I'm just glad. 
I'm glad you're with me. Yeah. Me too. Cute. Oh, met the cargo. I think we went back to the future. Wow, that's the end. <laughs> I mean, it was okay. I'm glad it was as short as it was, to be honest. Wow, that was really simple. I enjoyed it. It was a chill playthrough. We got to talk about some stuff. But if I had played this just for me, just for, like, personal, like, anyone playing this for themselves, let me know what you thought in a comment. I would have been disappointed myself. But, I mean, it's fine to do a chill playthrough. We've spent some time hanging out here on... Uh, the channel and just chatting about stuff, but yeah, I, I didn't get into that one as much as I hoped I would. I have to be honest. Annapurna have never let me down. As a publisher, I love all of their games. They're always really beautiful and kind of moving games, but this one quite just didn't, maybe didn't quite have the writing, to be honest, um, and the story, but I did like the twist, so, you know, we'll decompress on it. Maybe it's um, something that we'll think of more positively after the fact. Um, but yeah, it's developed over many years by many hands. All the people below played a crucial role. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. I think maybe just because I've waited so long for this game as well, and it's been kind of teased and promoted for such a long time. I thought it was going to be like the next Gone Home, um, but we didn't quite get there. But let me know what you thought in a comment. And thank you for spending some time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Just because I didn't get fully into it doesn't mean we didn't enjoy our time together. And if you want to go on another adventure, there are some on the screen right now. So hit like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Good night.